NLP Network, basically sponsored by Bread Magazine. We have our first exclusive from um, Perfect Legacy Premier Promotions artist and chef, um, Chef Robert Stu. Um, tell everybody a little bit about who you are and what you got going on. Thank you for having me. I always start by saying all good things come from God, but the helping hand certainly belong to you. And I'm honored to have you on my team because it's definitely been uh, very impactful for my brand. And I certainly appreciate all that you do behind the scenes. All right, now that we got that out the way, uh, my name is Robert Stewart, AKA Chef Stu, originally from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, grew up cooking, went to culinary school, um, picked up some training throughout the field. And now I'm on path to becoming one of the top chefs in the world. Okay. Um, what made you decide to, when did you know um, it was time for you, like, what made you feel like you was ready to become a chef? Um, well, I guess, honestly, it's, it's, it's like, you know, the quote, you know, the purpose-driven life at some point when, you know, you just feel like you step into your purpose. Um, and so indirectly, I was prepared for my purpose not knowing. And so, like I said, I grew up cooking as a kid. Um, I come from a really big family in Baltimore. My grandmother had 13 kids, so we had a really big family. And as crazy as that would be, my mother just happened not to be one of those ones who really picked up the whole cooking thing. And so she used to work nights on top of that, which left me kind of like coming home from school having to cook, you know what I'm saying? And so from that, it was like a survival thing at first. It wasn't necessarily me as a kid thinking this is gonna be my career path later in life. It was, hey, mommy at work, we hungry. So let's cook something to eat. And then from that, um, learning from my grandmother, having such a big family, everybody going to my grandmother's house throughout the weekends and, you know, throughout our life and holidays and everything. And she just always made all this great food. And then I knew that I would be cooking when I got home. So I would kind of like watch and pay attention to the stuff that she was doing. And then from that, I would end up going to, you know, going to a school and took culinary arts. And so... At that point, I had been doing it for a while, like from a kid almost into a young adult, so to speak. And um, I kind of just was like, all right, cool. Now that I've been, you know, now this, now let me go figure out what I really want to do. And so I tried all kinds of different stuff, went to college for business management, motivational speaking, um, property and casualty insurance classes, different stuff. But then it was like years later where it's just like, you know, understanding that I wasn't really building an empire that I was just maintaining and that, you know, I really wanted to, you know, be successful, you know, and, and have everything that I felt like was deserved to me. And in that, I kind of did a little inventory of my life and I just realized like, you know, seldom do a person like look in the mirror and really say like, hey, um, you know, these are, these are my strengths, these is my, my good qualities. You know, these are the things that I really don't do so well. And, you know what I'm saying? It's like, when you really had that real talk with yourself, you know, your purpose starts to reveal itself a little bit. And for me, after that talk to myself, after a couple of things I had been through, then I realized like, you know what? This cooking thing really is about to be, you know, my, my, my new career choice. Now, like I say, luckily for me, when I made that choice, it was an easy one because I had already been trained. I already had the passion for it. And it just, that's what it, that's where it became. And like, even once I grabbed the idea of, okay, I want to be in the culinary arts industry, I came in to be a restaurant owner. Um, and so, uh, everything that ever happened was, I never planned for it to happen. And that's why I'm like, super thrilled about it and I like to encourage people because sometimes you may not know where this road going to lead you I certainly didn't think that it would lead me where it led me but I just knew that I wanted to get serious about a, 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 a get serious about something and look at all the stuff that came so I will hope that 
at some point you would find something that you're passionate about and then be surprised at all the wonderful things that it'll bring. Um, what are some of the people that you have worked with um, in the past? You know, honestly, um, what I've learned throughout my journey is that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to give any of the people the wrong impression that I actually cook for, <laughs> like, you know, they become my, my best friends. I normally is like, who is this guy? But no, um, I've had a chance to cook for them and everybody in the industry, honestly. Like, I, I started to collect the signatures of the people that I had a chance to cook for. And, like, I find myself saying their names so much that I'm trying to avoid answering the question because it's just like, this is all this dude talks about. But no, um, I've had a chance to cook for um, Bobby Valentino, Lunell, Angie Stone, um, Miss Deb, Mook B, Carly Red, Young Jock, I mean, Styles P, Dame Dash, I mean, Lunell, Michelle A. Um, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. Best Hassan Whiteside, Darren Henson. I mean, I love all of y'all. Tracy Ellis Ross, Michael Jamal Warner, Shaquille O'Neal. Check out my IG, scroll through the page, and you'll see me with your favorite entertainers, rappers, basketball players, you name it. Now, did you, um, so you cooked for Styles P before you met him on the TV set? You knew him beforehand? Actually, I got a, a, a crazy story for Styles from Styles. Like, um, growing up in the streets of Baltimore, come on, with the locks, the D block, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm listening to it like everybody else. And um, it just so happened some friends of mine, they wanted to go to Miami. We go to Miami come to find out is actually Jada his birthday and they was at uh this club in Miami so we went to the club and we like yo there they go right there I go over there to Jada I'm like yo happy birthday let me show you some love homie and buy you a bottle and I'll never forget what he said he was like yo you ain't keep your money you don't got Bobby no bottle you already showing me love you know what I'm saying matter of fact we got bottles you can drink with us and like they let me drink with them and like, we just partied, you know what I'm saying? And all night we just got it in and um, Styles was there. And so um, I got to meet them and hang out with them a little bit in the club. And like, I took that as like, just a dope now. This is before the chef thing. This is just running around in the streets. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, that's probably the last time I'm ever gonna see this dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they, they everything that I thought that they was. Yeah. Fast forward that to, I don't know how many years later, I want to say like 10 or 50, like a lot of years later, right? I'm catering um, Dame Dash movie. Shout out to Shoe City, New Balance. Um, and so they, um, they, came to, they came to LA to do this. Uh, Dame Dash had a deal with um, New Balance for a shoe release. And then, you know, he had the Honor Up movie going on, premiere. And so... I ended up catering that event. And so Styles came in and um, when I seen him, I'm like, yo, this dude looks so familiar. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yeah, that's Styles. And like the way that he looked at me, I was like, yo, I think this dude might, I think he might know me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and so we didn't even really say nothing to each other. We just kind of was like, yo, what's up? We kept it moving. And then that night, like later on in that night, we sat down and we was talking and I, I said, yo, you know what I'm saying? I remember it. I said, no. Nah. I said, yo, you, I, I went to like introduce, I like, how it went down? He kind of was like, nah, I know who you is. Like, I remember you. I was like, yo, we hung out one night a long time ago. He was like, I remember. So it was just love to um, to be able to see him. And so when I did run into him at Mars Boot Camp, um, I had already cooked for him before. And, uh, they didn't show it, but one night I actually cooked some food for him and his wife. But uh, y'all never got a chance to see it. <laughs> um, 
tell everybody a little bit about um, what some of the different shows that you have been on um, on TV. All right, so, um, well, some of the different shows, I got to start with the shows that wasn't big hit shows and everybody knows about, honestly. Um, my TV world started on a show called Table Scraps TV. Um, it was a kind of like a talk show slash with a chef. I mean, it was almost like the format of The View before it was even The View, you know what I'm saying? But that was the first show that I was on. Um, and then I did it. Then I was a cast member of that show. The second show that I did was a show called Industry Suit with Chef Stu. This was me um, basically showing you guys like an up and coming celebrity chef in Atlanta. The term celebrity chef was like a new feel to Atlanta, especially with an um, a African male, you know, as a celebrity chef, it was kind of like, wait a minute, it was a different thing. Um, and so at that point, I just, I kind of just like let the world into my life slightly to say, hey, listen, guys, my name is Chef Stu. I work at a bunch of restaurants. I've been training for the last four or five years to get my own restaurant. Now I didn't start cooking for celebrities. I don't have a restaurant. They actually come to my house. I get to chill out with meet them, hang out with them. And here's the people, and this is what I made them. And this is called Industry Soup with Chef Stu. Come learn about the industry and hang out with Chef Stu. Um, I shot seven episodes of that show. Uh, that's how I met Lunell. That's how I met, um, well, Brandy and Shamari, I was already kicking it with them, but they ended up becoming guests of the show. Darren Henson, Blue Kimball, Raindrop Lopez, Michael Kiefer 112. I mean, uh, Tony Turner, like, Roxanne Montana, like everybody came through, we filmed it. And then from that, um, then I will go on to networks that you guys would be familiar with. But I always like to tell the backstory. Um, I was on Guys Grocery Games, Food Network, first major competition on a um, network. Um, I came back and I competed on Cutthroat Kitchen, where I won Cutthroat Kitchen. So yes, I am a celebrity chef, Food Network star. Don't get it screwed. Um, then I made it on to Supermarket Stakeout on Food Network as well. So three shows on Food Network, Cutthroat Kitchen, Guys Grocery Game, Supermarket Stakeout. Y'all go search for Chef's Dude. Check me out on the show. Tell me what y'all think. Uh, then I went to OWN TV. I made an appearance on OWN TV. So shouts out to Kim Whitley. Shouts out to Lunell for... Um, you know, allowing me to become her personal chef. That led to an appearance on OWN TV. So thank you to OWN TV, Oprah Winfrey, Kim Whitley, love all y'all. Um, I was on TV One, Roland Martin's Thanksgiving Day Special. I did a Caribbean twist on some Thanksgiving food, so y'all can check me out on Roland Martin. I mean, on TV One. Um, I guest appeared behind the scenes in Tales. So shouts out to BET, Irv Gotti, and everything they got going on with the Tales thing. Erica, thank you for shouting me. And Drew uh, reached out to me. They needed a chef in the part. I came through and uh, I did a stunt double. So y'all don't see my face, but you see my hands. It all works out. Um, I also was on. Fox 45 in Baltimore, Del Mar Life, BCTVS, um, Comcast, Verizon. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of them all. There's a lot. But uh, but that's the ones that I can think of. Oh, Marriage Boot Camp. Obviously, cannot forget Marriage Boot Camp. We TV. I know that y'all seen Stu on there. I hope that I gave y'all all the laughs because they keep telling me how funny I was on the show. So I'm hoping that I actually got a chance to make you guys laugh. Um, but now, with that being said, let me just tell you about some shows that I will be on um, that you guys aren't familiar with yet, but let me tell you. Crazy as it is, I'm dropping three reality television shows and the way that it's about to work with the editing and all of that, the process, it looks like all of them are going to come to you guys at the same time. All right. So the first show that you guys can check me out on is a show called 
how to what chefs do. How to what chefs do. Um, this is a straight cooking show. I'm taking in requests from fans, friends, all throughout my journey. You know, as you become chef stew and you do all of these things, I get constantly asked, how did you get flowers? How did you get this? How did you get people to do this? How do you make chicken? How do you do? How do you, how, 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 right? So now we got a show called How To With Chef Stew. And I'm showing you guys how to do things in the culinary arts industry, how to make basic dishes, how to cook better at the house. I'm introducing you to new ingredients. I'm giving you cooking tips. I'm giving you cleaning tips. And so I'm just teaching you guys how to do some things in the kitchen. I think it's a really informative show. It's a cooking show where I think you guys can actually learn how to cook. I slow it up, I dumb it down, and we walk through the dish together. And so I am encouraging feedback from the public to ask me questions of stuff that you want to know how to make, and then I'll do a dedication show to you. And so I really want this to be a cooking show where I'm interactive with the public and everybody starts to engage with chefs too. So, hey, I'm the go-to guy. Ask me any question you want and I'll handle it. Now, another show that you'll see me launch on real quick. And by the way, uh, How To With Chefs Do will be available on the MNF channel, music and food channel, available on Voozle TV, Roku, all streaming platforms. Now, I'm on another show called Food For Thought With Chefs Do. Food For Thought With Chefs Do is basically giving me a chance to kind of uh, practice a menu selection that I'll be unveiling with the stew sticks package. And so like this whole show is designed to show y'all what stew sticks is um, from the menu standpoint, but also give you a chance to kind of chop it up with me as I, you know, talk about some of our community's toughest issues and just some real hot topics, good food, you will love it. That's food for thought with chefs do. Y'all make sure y'all check that out. And then lastly, I got a show called Transition Kitchen. Shots out to the Risk Foundation. Um, as you know personally that I have a foundation and I've dedicated a great amount of finances, resources, and time to building a culinary arts training program to try to inspire uh, countless kids from all across the world to, you know, get familiar with the endless possibilities in the culinary arts industry. I mean, it, once you dive into it, you'll realize that this has so many lanes, it's so many avenues, there's so many ways to be successful in this industry that um, I want to encourage kids. And then more importantly, cooking is a life skill. And so I want to showcase, you know, not only my personal journey of taking the same little knife cut and knowing how to see it as properly, for me, turned into some million dollar, some million dollar stuff, it could actually do the same for you. And so I invite the world into the classroom with me as I train a group of teens from San Francisco, Hunters Point to be exact, as they would say. And um, I'm showing these kids how to become cooks. And even if they don't want to be chefs, they still love the course and we have a great time. So Transient Kitchen, family fun show, shows you guys what the Transient Kitchen program looks like. So please get familiar with those three shows you can find them all on streaming platforms, Roku, Android, Xbox, PlayStation. Put in that hashtag Chef Stu, um, and you should be able to drive to some footage and tell me what y'all think. Okay. Well, we're definitely glad to have you here on the PLP Network, um, sponsored by Bread Magazine. Again, this is um interview with Chef Stu. Make sure you tell everybody where to find you and how to contact you, and um, make sure you give all your shout outs. All right. Um, I'm really easy to find. Hashtag Chef Stu, and now Stu is spelled S T E W. Um, so make sure y'all spell Stu the right way. Once you put in hashtag Chef Stu, you should be able to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, Google, Bing, YouTube, Voozle, Food Network, WeTV, TV One. I mean, that's how you find me. I have a website, www.chefstu.com. Definitely come over to the website, check me out. I'm dropping all kinds of like how to like teasers on YouTube. So if you guys want to get familiar with some how to things now, definitely go over there to YouTube, check out my channel. Um, as always, got to shout out Perfect Legacy Promotions. 
shouts out to George Bostic behind the scenes. One time for Joe Blast and the Music and Food Channel. Um, is a lot. It's a lot. But um, I got to send the love to the kids. And other than that, my family, my friends, my fans, my followers, I, I rocks with all of y'all. Thank you because you encouraged me. Um, the media was beating me up a little bit, but they back my friend now. And so I'm ready to just bring some content to the network and um, cook, cook, my, cook my heart out and inspire the world in the process. All right. Well, we definitely glad that, um, that you are here and we'll be looking forward to talking to you soon. Thank you for this opportunity. God bless you. Have a great day. Okay.